Welcome everyone. Um, I'm proud to announce our first Holocast, a combination of a hologram and a podcast. So this is our first time that we have our guest, which he doesn't need any introduction. He's with me as a hologram using HoloConnect. Um, he is a former Air Force NASA surgeon, former Air Force general, NASA surgeon, first human holoportrait to the space station, among many other titles. Dr. Smith, it's a privilege to have you here, sir. It's absolutely my privilege to be with you, Dr. Fernando de la Peñaca. And you were the second person holoported to space, the so second human. And you remember that your knee was actually the first part of you that was holoported to space. And then together, you and I were holoported so that an astronaut could see us on board. And if you remember right, we grabbed everybody who was in the control room and everybody was holoported to space. It was a complete honor. Well, the honor is on mine, sir, but you have a so diverse career. Um, Air Force General, NASA surgeon, technology uh, leader. How, how, what, what had in you, what do you have in your mind to select this path? So uh, I believe at some point you were like, 18, trying to find the right career. So what do you have in your mind and why did you decide to take this path? Yes, I heard about this thing called aerospace medicine and there was a lecture that was given and the guy said that you could take care of pilots and their families. I said, that's interesting. And he said that if you sign on the dotted line that they're healthy enough to fly, that's your job. I said, that's really interesting. And they said, if you do that, they have to take you flying with them. I knew at that point that's exactly what I wanted to do. Then he mentioned that you take, they take you flying with them, but there are also astronauts who do that same job and they need a flight surgeon as well. So I knew at that point I wanted to work in with space and also with astronauts. So I decided to follow aerospace medicine. Secondly, I wanted to serve my country. And so one way to do that was to join the Air Force. I chose to join the Air Force because I knew they had a lot of planes and also, therefore, they had probably many pilots, and therefore, they probably needed some flight surgeons to take care of those pilots. So I joined the Air Force to serve my country, number one, and also to pursue aerospace medicine. Wow, While I was there, I got a, a residency in family medicine, and then also uh, another residency in, in aerospace medicine. I have enjoyed technology all my life. I started off as a programmer, then started using computers, of course, and now it's come full circle that we're able to use new technology, such as this Hollow Connect software, to take us to places where we've never been before. So try to combine those three interests all in one. Wow, that's amazing, sir. And tell me about being an Air Force General, um, a NASA surgeon. Tell me about your biggest successes. You, you had so many, but... What makes you like very proud about your career? You're very kind, Fernando. So just going to medical school and being successful to get through medical school, because I was an average student, but I was able to get through, and then doing a couple of residencies were just a, a lot of, I think, personal achievement. And then on the Air Force side, I became a squadron commander and then an individual mobilization assistant to the Space Force. Before it was called Space Force, it was Space Command, so it was Space Command that I was assigned to. And then I worked at the Pentagon as the Deputy Joint Staff Surgeon, so I talked directly with the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and then also the Air Force Surgeon General. That was on the Air Force side. The whole time I'm also working at, I was working at NASA, and I got some really interesting patients. Number one was Joe Engel, he's the last surviving X-15 pilot, he needed a doctor, and then Tom Stafford, Apollo 10. He also lived in the area and would come to Houston quite a bit, uh, and I took care of him. And then the last man to walk on the moon, Gene Cernan, I was his physician for 17 years. So uh, those were really fun achievements. For me, it was like taking care of Lewis and Clark, explorers. And since then, I got my shuttle certification, so I did a couple of shuttle missions. And then after that, did work uh, now for the International Space Station, and now we did seven missions for that. I have the current crew that's on board. They'll be on board for one year, and we're going to land soon. 
So hopefully we do that safely. And then lastly, working with the Orion uh, capsule. So it's going to take us back to the moon and hopefully on the Mars. And those have been some of my achievements, but this one has been a lot of fun. You and I and our team were able to take uh, using new technologies that were developed and take it to some place that's uh, no one had done before. So I count those things as good achievements. Amen, sir. And tell me about that. Um, holographic teleportation in space, it sounds like a lot of fun. I believe that every single human being on the planet knows about you and the first human holoported to the space station. Tell me more about that. You, you're part of the human history now, sir. Well, you're very kind to say that, Fernando. As, as we talked, you were the second person, and together we went to space. So I remember working with you on the, uh, with the undersea habitat, and so we used a HoloLens to do augmented reality. And then you showed me how we could place something in a location out in another room in, or another place, and it would remain there for three minutes or three weeks. And then you said, well, where can we else we do this? And it was together, you and I came up with the idea, why don't we take it to space? So we did it as a team. You know, we came up with the vision of using that for innovation and this new technology, and we tried to take it where no humans had ever been, bo done, never been before. Uh, so we took it to the space station. We have the vision of using this as the first telemedicine to go to space in this manner, a new way of communication. We first want to use it for telemedicine, so you can bring your, your physician anywhere, bring them to your local location. Then family members. We'd like to bring family members to the space station and also uh, the space station astronauts and cosmonauts, bring them down to the, uh, to the ground so that they can enjoy uh, Thanksgiving dinner with their family members. Then we'd like to bring engineers and other people to the space station and have them work together with the astronauts on pieces of equipment, perhaps using haptics and other ways to feel the, and to actuate you know, levers and work on equipment that's there. But it's been a lot of tremendous fun bringing these teams together to create something brand new where you've never, never done that. Just bringing the teams together was a lot of fun. Hey Amen. Uh, sir, do you want to move a little bit to your left? There you go. That's more perfect. Okay. Um, so about that, sir, how, how do you envision the future of holographic teleportation? Um, first human holoported to space station is it sounds like the first telephone call in human history uh, and we we can go to YouTube and watch that first video of the first telephone call in human history you are the first human holoported to space station but I know that that's a beginning you as a general have a vision what's your vision about this technology sir well amen this technology has been around at least since 2016 but this was the first time we used it with only five megabytes of bandwidth and had taken it to space. We didn't have all the big te television studio and all the other equipment. So doing something with a small amount of equipment, but a wonderful team, we were able to achieve that. So I really feel that innovation is using the tools that you have and creating something new with it or taking it to some place that no one had ever taken it to. So, in 20 years, hopefully people look back on our achievements, our team, and said, gosh, you guys were able to take something that you had and available to you and take it somewhere that no one ever had done that. So hopefully by that time, we've improved the resolution. We've made it so it's multicast, so one person can talk to 300 people, and those 300 people can talk to 300 more. Also, we'd like to add haptics in so you could actually shake hands with each other. As a, as a physician, perhaps add haptics so you can actually do examinations. As an engineer, getting the real-time feedback of when you're manipulating equipment and fixing equipment. And being able to take your expert with you wherever you want to go. So, in, in fact, bring your physician or your surgeon to the location where you are. Or bring the patients to the surgeons to make it possible for people to have medical care where, no matter where they are on the planet or off the planet. Those are some of the things we're thinking about, but I, I know in 20 years, people will use this technology to create things that we're not even thinking about. They will use other technology and other people and other teams to create something brand new. It's, this is what we hope that people will use this. They'll get some inspiration from this 
first podcast, Holocast, and from our first set of humans that went to space, perhaps someone else will be uh, will have the inspiration to do something brand new as well. Amen. Sir, you are an inspiration for so many people. Um, you have a huge career, and I know that it's only the beginning. What do you say to younger people, like people that just trying to follow your path, trying to decide, like, if they want to go to college, what to do with their lives, with their lives, what do you tell them? Yeah, I think of the Japanese term of called ikigai, which means something you're good at, something you like to do, something that uh, you'll get paid for, you know, so you can support yourself, and then something that's good for the world. So if you can combine all four of those things, you will do quite well and you'll have a great career. And your career is going to change over time as well. The other thing is that you can't do it by yourself. You got to work hard by yourself, learn something new and, and become very good at what you do, but also find other people that you like to work with and who want to do the same thing. Find those people and immerse yourself with those people too. Share your dreams with each other and find new things that you can share and work together. As you know, we formed a great team. It was you and I that had the vision of what we wanted to do with our technology. And also you and I come from different backgrounds. So I'm a physician and you're an aerospace and computer engineer. And when you have people work from different backgrounds, you also come from Mexico and I was born in Germany and now we work here in the United States. And so people with different backgrounds come up, can come up with new ideas as well. And then find other people. Our team was 10 people that got together and those 10 people all had different talents and they were very good at what they did. Also, they had different things that they wanted to achieve in addition to holoportation. They wanted to improve their networks. They wanted to improve the use of this technology. They had computers that they wanted to upgrade. So everybody had something that they wanted to get from the project. So when you're doing your career and following your career, find other people that want to join in your vision or join in their vision and everyone can uh, achieve things that they want to being part of that group. Find people who are different from you and figure out a way that you can work with them. It's also based on trust. You remember you and I trusted each other. We continue to trust each other. So having the ability to trust each other that we're going to work hard, we're going to show up on time, we're going to try to work the problems together, that we treat each other as equals, and that together we can achieve a lot. Those are some of my advice to my, my fellow colleagues, new students and old student, older students as well. What can we achieve together? So the icky guy, all the things that you do well, something you're going to get paid for, something that you're good at and something that's good for the world, and then having a good vision. And if you find someone else has a good vision, join in their vision, and then working well as a team, finding people that you can trust that may be different from you, joining with them. I think those are all good pieces of advice that people have taught me and that I've experienced. Those are very good advices, sir. Uh, having a team, I believe, is super important. You know that as an Air Force General, NASA Surgeon, leader. So I believe team is uh, a very important word for success. Um, I have another question. Mars, uh, it's, it has been in our dreams. Uh, but having someone like a crew on Mars, there is a huge communication delay that it may take eight to 60 minutes just to have a one-way communication. Um, if someone, like a, an astronaut, is having a problem on Mars, he say, Houston, uh, I'm bleeding. It will take like 60 minutes just to reach this signal back to the mission control. And then if an NASA surgeon asks, like, from where? We already wasted like almost 40 minutes. Uh, so that that's a lot of time. How do you envision that um, do you can solve this problem of communication delay? That's a because yeah, we can't overcome physics, right? It's, it's the speed of, of light, and there's no way to go faster than that. So we're probably going to have to have an engineer like you, who's got a hollow ported uh, copy of you, and maybe has some artificial intelligence associated with that. And you're already present on Mars, and then also on the ground, we have another engineer or a physician. And we can make sure that those copies are actually working in sync together uh, and that they're sharing data. The second thing.
thing is by using holograms like this and holoportation, you feel comfortable because you know that engineer or you know that physician. You recognize them and you trust that actually that's the person you're talking with or at least a good copy of that person so that you can work with them as a team. Those are the problems we're going to have to overcome. But I know that we're, it's going to give us uh, new ways to figure out how to innovate because of these problems. How do we make sure that the copy is good? How do we make sure that those copies are actually talking to us? Can we trust them or not? Can the person who's working with them on Mars, can they trust them? And then we have to share data and uh, continuously share data and somehow overcome time. That's gonna, those are going to be the challenges. But just like when we landed on the moon, that you and I were kids when they landed on the moon, and they came up with new innovations, this is what's going to push us forward to come up with new ways to communicate, new ways to do telementoring, new ways to do telemedicine, teleengineering, those are the problems that we're going to have to solve, and it's going to be – these are good problems for us to solve. I'm really excited, Fernando. I don't know about you. I know you're excited, too. I am, sir. And do you have any final words, any final message, especially for people watching this today and for people watching this in the future, like maybe 20, 30 years from now? What's your final message today? Because I know that technology is evolving. Your vision is evolving every single day. Well, just people watching this in the future and watching today, what, what are your words uh, for them? I, a, amen, Fernando. I think, I know this is our first hollow cast. It's the first ever podcast. So you can think it's been recorded, right? It would be, and perhaps we do have early recordings of some of the early telecommunications like tele, telephone and television. So perhaps people will look at this as the first hollow cast interview and they can see, well, I can improve upon that. And then in 20 years, it'll be interesting to see what we'll have, like we talked about. Well, we have haptics, so we can do handshakes. We'll, we'll be able to work on equipment together. What is going to be new? The sky is no longer the limit, and dimensions are no longer the limit. Time and place are no longer limits. What can we dream up together, and how can we use this? I'm really excited to be able to use this new technology for good of humankind. It's going to be fun, Fernando. The future is now. We're making science fiction into science reality. Amen, sir. And just to finalize, I'm going to take you uh, as a hologram, and I'm going to move you around so people can see that you are in a three-dimensional representation of yourself. Uh, and I may take a selfie with you, but people can see hollow you in three dimensions, so there is volume, and we can have a selfie. Fantastic, Fernando. Dr. Dana Peniyaka, it's been a pleasure to be with you on this podcast, the first ever Holocast. The pleasure is all mine, sir. Thank you.